Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through my process of knitting a jumper from my own stash that was inspired by one that I've seen in a store. Um, I sort of am in the process of doing it right now and I thought that it would be really fun to make video describing the experience so that um, I could document it and then maybe inspire others to do the same thing because it's really fun and it's fun to get inspiration from different places. So yeah, I thought I would talk you through the process before I got any farther. Um, the story begins with this jumper that I saw. I'll insert a picture here. I saw it online in, in an ad on Instagram, but then I also saw it in person in a shop window. Um, and I found out that it was the same shop. And um, so I went to the shop to visit it deliberately. And I took a couple pictures and I checked out like the type of yarn that they used and looked at the colors and tried to figure out why it, why I liked it so much, I guess, like why it worked so well. This is what I found and I will insert those pictures here. The yarn is at a pretty loose gauge, which gives it a lot of drape, but it looked like the neckline, which is a folded over ribbed neckline, was knit at a much tighter gauge. Um, it's a drop shoulder jumper, and all of the yarn is tweed. And the three colors, yellow, sort of orange, and green, I guess orange, yellow, green, are all next to each other on the color wheel. So I figured that that would be something that I wanted to apply to my own jumper when I was making my own version because I don't have the colors in my stash that they used in the shop bought one. Here's a roundup of all of the yarns that I own that could be used in this project. All of these are 100% wool and um, they're varying weights, but that's okay. Um, I have, um, this isn't like all of the quantities of them. Some of them I have more of like, I have loads of this brown and I have a lot of this beige and like these three colors I have quite a lot of, but then some of them I only have one skein of. So I sort of have a mental count of that. I just can't lay everything out on the table. Like this, I only have one of. Um, so the jumper in the shop, one thing that I noticed about it was that it used some neutrals, um, but the three colors that were used in the jumper were all next to each other on the color wheel. It was a, um, a yellow, an orange, and a green. So I don't really have a yellow, an orange, and a green, um, but, but I have other colors that are equally good. And then I think that the original jumper had a dark color and a light color as well. So I'm thinking that maybe, oh, and also since the thicknesses are different, I'm very open to marling. Um, Cause I think that for the fingering weight, I'm gonna want to hold it times three. And then maybe for like this, if I used this, which is Rowan, it's a discontinued Rowan yarn. Um, Rowan Aaron Tweed, I think. I would only hold that one. Um, so I'm thinking, well, for the light colors, I have these three options. This is Candy by Biche Bouche, and it has like other colors in it, but that means that it's quite a cool gray, which I don't know if you can really see in this light. Apologies for the light. Uh, it's, it's the evening time. Um, this was a, a knitting for all of wheat, heavy merino that I was sent by accident. And then this is a Jameson and Smith color. And so I kind of want to keep the palette of the neutrals warm. So I'm kind of thinking of not using this um, and using these two held together. I only have one ball of this though, so that might pose a problem. But you know, if I run out, then I'll just knit the back with a different color. So I'm gonna start with that. Apologies for the, if this is too shaky of a, of a um, video. Maybe I'll try and set it up in a less shaky way. I wonder if I can. Be right back. Okay, I think you can see everything here. It's at my phone's in a bit of a precarious situation, but um, this is actually so much better. 
So, okay. Um, so we, we've discussed the light neutral color. I'm sorry that my face isn't in the frame. It's more important to be able to see the yarn, I think. <laughs> um, so I'll set that to the side for now because I think that I definitely want to go with that. Um, I really like this. And I think that, I think that I want to incorporate marling, even if it's subtle, into almost all of the sections, maybe like at least three out of the five colors. Um, so, and it's just really nice. This is a yarn from Ronaldsey, the island where the sheep eat seaweed. And I just had one skein of it. I balled this up the other day. I have no idea. <laughs> where it came from because I don't remember buying it. But um, yeah, it's really, it's quite soft, kind of surprisingly soft. Um, so I'm also gonna set that aside because I'd love to use that. Um, okay, so now I'm still looking at my color palette and there's the thing, the jumper has five colors originally, and there, are th there's also a dark color, actually, which maybe I should... Well, dark could either be this dark blue, but I think you can also create a kind of cool dark effect by marling colors that are quite different from each other. So maybe like, since I'm planning, if it was fingering weight, I think I would hold it three strands. So maybe like th these three marled together would be like, oh, apologies. <laughs> maybe these three marled together would be a good dark color. Um, or this with this, but that might be too thick. Cause if you look at how thick that strand is, um, it's quite thick. So, uh, Fergus, it would be good if you weren't on the table right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now let's have a bit of a play. Um, this was given to me by my friend Bailey. It's, uh, it's not as bright as it's coming up on the screen, I think. Um, it's gorgeous. She got it in Iceland. And it's, it's unspun, but there's two strands, like it's caked up with two strands. I don't really want to use an unspun yarn in this. So I might exclude this from, the, from contention for this project, just cause I think it will be more cohesive if I don't use an unspun. So, okay, I will exclude this. I'll put it over there. Okay, that leaves us with these well this is sort of a dark option so i'll put this over here so we are left with these colors this is work this setup is working um okay um i just i'm not feeling the blue so i think i'm going to exclude the blue the blue would maybe be really nice, but then it, the blue would be gorgeous. Ugh, just hold on a sec, okay. Look at this. That's a nice palette for a jumper, right? That would be really nice. But I don't know, I'm just not, oh, but I am feeling it. I, okay, I don't think I want it to be blue. to be perfectly honest. Although I think it would look good, but if this goes well, maybe I'll make more than one of these. I am having a lot of fun. <laughs> um, okay, this these colors all look really good together too. Um, I mean, you can't beat the pink and red combination right now. Those, these are both biche bouche. Petite lamb's wool. Um, yeah. How does this look with the with the group? 
I'll just hold up this for the light color plus a dark. That's nice. I really like the marl. So that's an option. Although now I, I honestly can't get that blue option out of my head. Because what if the blue went with this green? And those were the three colors along with this and this. Sparky, come on. What if that was, that's so nice. Uh, really, that's nice. Fergus, are you gonna sit or are you gonna go? Come on. Okay. There's also this one, which I guess it could be a neutral or it could be seen as orange. Like you could do these three as the three main colors. I do like this. I like this, I like where this is going. Plus, plus this and what about this? I actually think that this is good. This is maybe what I'm gonna go for. Hmm. Or maybe it's, I don't know how this is gonna work. It's not unspun, but it is like a single ply. I've also had this forever. Um, so it would be nice to use it. Lots of fun options. Okay, maybe I'll tilt you a little bit up so I can talk to you. Okay, well, I have now shown you all of my stash that is feasible for the project. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope that this is an interesting video so far. And I will let you know when I pick a pattern and what that pattern is. All right, everyone. So here's the jumper again. You've seen it very recently, but I keep it pulled up on my computer. Um, here are my two sleeves that I've been working on. Here, um, I have used the Winter's Pullover by Ozetta because it it's using, it's got like roughly the gauge that I was looking for, an iron weight gauge. My cat is desperate to come sit on these sleeves. And um, I was referencing my spreadsheet as to uh, where I was gonna put each of the colors. Um, so I decided that the red would sub in for rust, the pink would be for <laughs> the yellow, um, the... Mara would be the green, but I messed up and accidentally used it as the light color. Um, the light color is the light color. And then the dark color is, um, it's hard to see. <laughs> Hello, Fergus. It's hard to see, but the dark color is actually a marl of this and this. So you can see that in there, I think. So it's a little bit, pulls a little bit warmer than just this wood on its own. Um, unfortunately, I really don't like the fabric of this section. I think that it looks kind of lumpy. Uh, it would be great if my cat wasn't sitting on here, but he is. So yeah, it's like way thicker than the other section. Um, and it's like lumpy. So I just think that it would wear strangely even though the grams per meter is the same as all of the other combinations. Um, yeah, I think I need to rip this out down to here and redo this using that combination that I talked about earlier of the, the three dark colors together. The rest of the yarn, well, the rest of the fingering weight yarns are three, are held treble. And I've almost used up half of my red I have one other ball, but um, yeah, but I think that that's fine because the only other red in the jumper is in this section. And although it's quite big, it doesn't really matter if I do it differently on the front and the back. So I'm banking on that. You might be able to tell, oh, Fergus, come on, <laughs> that there's another section at the top of the sleeve 
that I haven't added in yet. It's simply because I wanted to start with the sleeves because I just wanted to start knitting and get a gauge swatch. But I don't actually know how drop shoulder the jumper is going to be. So I don't actually know how long the sleeves will need to be yet. Um, this is what my cat does literally from 3 p.m. onwards and he gets fed at 7 p.m. So um, yeah, I don't know how long the sleeves need to be. So I don't feel like I can really estimate this next section accurately enough to have any purpose. Once I, I'm gonna cast on the body after I re-knit this sleeve. Oh, you can see the green now, kinda. Um, yeah, so I'll cast on the body after I re-knit that sleeve. And once I get past the armholes, I can then um, add this section at the top of the sleeves. Um, to whatever length is needed. Talk to you soon. I returned to you having completed um, both sleeves. I chose to re-knit the one with the blue and green marl. Um, the fabric was just too thick. So I, yeah, I re-knit it and I love the outcome of the marl. I, I hope you'll be able to see it because um, I've got quite good light. So I've used those three dark colors combined um, to create just a sort of dark color. And it's really stunning in person. I, I just don't know if it's gonna come up. So this fabric has a strand of whole super soft in it, so that will bloom once it's blocked. Um, but I like this a lot better. The drape is just much better. Um, it matches the rest of the fabric um, pretty well. And yeah, definitely a good call. I'm glad that I ripped it out and redid it. And it, you know, it takes a long time, but a jumper also takes a long time. So the sleeves go like this. Um, and that's about how far I've knit. So it's gonna be pretty drop shoulder, and then also there's another section of plain stock in it that goes at the top of the of this section of the sleeve. So I'll wait to knit that until I know how drop shouldered the jumper will be. Um, and if I if I want to make the sleeve a bit longer, I can always sort of roll it up a little bit. Let's say the drop shoulder comes all the way down to here, but I want to have that extra color. I can have it with a deliberate rolled cuff. So here's the one sleeve. You'll have to imagine what it looks like. Uh, so steamed up and then here's the other sleeve finished. So I think that they're really nice. Um, I did, so I start, not that this will be useful because I'm sure that you'll have a different gauge from me if you do choose to do this, but um, I cast on the number of stitches recommended in the pattern that I chose, and then I knit um, a couple inches of ribbing, and then I knit 16 rows of stockinette, um, and then I did some intarsia, here's the back, so you can see my intarsia work looks pretty good um, and I just increased this middle portion by one stitch on each side with every row. I think I should have left a row at the bottom and then um, made it a tighter point because it's an even number of stitches for the sleeve so I left two for that first row and I think it would look pretty good if it was just one but it's not that big of a deal. But if I was to do it again I would do that and I would just have one row of pink at the bottom and then I would use the free end and sew in with a darning needle um, the middle two legs between the two stitches like this these two legs to make it look like it was a point. Um, I had thought of that before I cast on the second sleeve and I didn't know that I would be re the first sleeve um, so I could have had the opportunity to do that but I just didn't so that's okay. The, um, this marled yarn is actually quite a different texture from the other yarns. It's significantly softer, um, although it's the same thickness. 
but I don't mind a bit of a softer yarn in there. Having finished the sleeves, I measured them for gauge. I know that it's not the most accurate measurement because they're not blocked, but I measured this one as it's not got spinning oil or in it the way that the one that uses holst does. And I got roughly between 14 and 15 stitches per four inches. Um, and the pattern that I'm using, the Winter's Pullover by Ozetta, is a 15 stitches per inch gauge. So I've chosen size three, which I believe is 54. Um, let me just double check. Yeah, size three is 54 inches, which gives me quite a lot of positive ease. And it's mine is going to come out a little bit bigger. That's what I want. So um, maybe I'll make this one longer so that other people can wear it too if they want. I don't know. I'm still just having fun. Um, so I've cast on the back. I'm going to knit the back down past the shaping and then I'm going to knit the front just because I want to make sure I have enough yarn to knit the front. Um, if I have to substitute some other yarns in for the back, that's fine, but I'm not totally sure I'll have enough of the red. I think the red is the only one that I'm worried about running out of. I have a limited amount of the cream, but I don't think that there's that much of it. So yeah, the red is really the only one that I'm worried about running out of. Um, so I'm going to knit down to the end of the shaping, and then I will cast on for the front and put the back on hold. I will knit this whole jumper flat because it's intarsia, and, and that's fine by me. But I, if there's a way to do intarsia in the round, I don't know it, and I think it would mess up my gauge. So I don't mind purling, but I don't love it, but I'm happy to knit this one flat. So I, I did make a small modification to the pattern, which was just because I've recently knit the Harlow by Kadri, and that is a drop shoulder jumper that has a design feature where you cast on from an I cord on the back. And I really like that. I think that it makes it look polished and a like a deliberate drop shoulder. So I decided to incorporate that into this as well. Um, so here's my I cord. <laughs> and then I've picked up from it and knit two rows. So I did the I cord um, in intarsia using, well, I guess I just switched the color. Based on the photo of the jumper, it looks like half of it is dark and then the other half is split into a section that comes to about here of the lightest color and then a section that is from sort of the end of the shoulder and then off, it's hard to see, is the green, which is what I'm using the marl for. So I estimated that based on the picture that I took to be about, um, about like two to three ratio, not to give the pattern away. So, um, so like 40% of the stitches on that half I made be the marl and then 60% of the stitches on this half I made be the white. It might end up being different to the split in the ending jumper. I find it really hard to eyeball from an eye cord or just in general, um, until there's, you're a little bit more into it, but I think that it'll be close enough that you'll get the effect. So yeah, I'm gonna start the short rows next, although not right now because I have to go and do some work. See you next time. I've been working on the body for the past couple of days, week or so, and this is what it's looking like. I switched the color, the pink and the red in this panel, because I have a lot more pink than I have red and I didn't want to run out. Um, I stopped doing the back panel just after the shaping um, because I, I'm gonna run out of this white co combination and I wanted to have it for the front. Um, but I'm just finishing up the white panel. I think my next row will be a color change in this white panel at the front. So then I can go back to the back and um, keep doing that. And 
I also made this red part a ch like an arch instead of a wedge um, because I thought that that would look nice. Although, I don't know how it's looking right now. Um, I'm recording right here, standing up because I've just added short rows to the, to the project. And I wanted to show you an example of how my other drop shoulder jumper fits me to sort of explain why I wanted to try adding short rows to this one because um, I really like this jumper. But if you look at it from the side, see how much higher the front is than the back. I'm just very busty and I just wanted to try putting in some short rows to my next jumper to see if it wouldn't do that. Um, I don't know, sometimes I like this look but then sometimes I don't. So, <laughs> so I'll show you what I've done so far. I followed the Coco Knits YouTube tutorial on how to add bust starts and I added 12 rows, I think, either 12 or 14 rows, um, which should give me a good like four inches. I didn't measure the length because you can measure, if you watch the YouTube video, she explains it. One way of calculating how many rows is to measure from the top of your shoulder bypassing your bust and then from the top of your shoulder over your bust and then knit the number of rows that is the difference between those numbers. The number of rows, like you make a gauge swatch and do rows per inch and then knit the number of rows that equals the number of inches between those numbers should give you like a flat hem at the bottom. I didn't do that because I don't really care about the hem being flat. I just don't really want it to stick out quite so much. And I just finished these last night. So this, a stitch marker and this stitch marker, uh, those are the beginning of the short row sections, and I just finished them. So as you can see, these last stitches, that row originally was going like this, and I've added this whole wedge in the middle. One thing about the Coco Knits YouTube tutorial is, I'll, I'll link it below, um, it's done on a cardigan, but it doesn't take a lot of thought to switch it to putting it onto a pullover. But I would say that if, it's, if this is one of the first times you're doing short rows, it might be worth trying to find a tutorial that demonstrates it on a pullover, just because with the cardigan, you're just doing half of the short row. And with the jumper, you're doing like short rows on each end of the row. Um, but basically you choose a point that is farther out than the most projected part of your bust so but only just so you can see for me the most projected part of my bust is right here so I made the stitch markers about here like one inch to the side and then you figure out how many rows you want to do and divide the number of stitches by the number of short rows you want to do on each side so I wanted to do between 12 and 14 stitches, I had 31 stitches on each side past the stitch marker. So I did a short row every five or so stitches, four to five stitches. Um, and it gave me, yeah, maybe like three inches of extra length in the front. It's hard to see the difference because the back still looks like that. But um, I actually think it's probably going to sit more like this. But yeah, I think it may have messed up my arch chart a little bit. Because you can see there's like kind of a dip. But I don't think I want to go back and fix that. I think that I'm just... That's just how it'll be. So, yes. There's the update. I'm, I'm in the next row. Maybe I'll knit one more row and then I'll stop with this panel and it's going to be the dark color. Um, and I've got quite a ways to go on this pink uh, panel with the arch. And then, 
yeah, uh, the back will probably end up being a different color combination and pattern because I'm just trying to use up what I have. Um, and I think that like, I don't, it just depends how much pink and red I have left. I have loads of this marl and I have very little of the uh, white. And there's one color in this dark marl that I'm worried about running out of. So it's a fun adventure. Here's my intarsia. And oh, I'll pop on the sleeve so that you can visualize. So this is, <laughs> and there's gonna be a section in here, which I haven't knit yet on the sleeves. So this is what it's gonna look like. I think I will check in with you soon. Bye. A lot has happened since the last time I recorded an update. Um, I finished the front of the jumper and knit the neckline. I've added the final panel to the sleeves and I've also moved country from Scotland to America. So please excuse the mess. This is my office in the States. And yeah, I'm still moving my stuff back in. Um, so things have been a little bit up in the air, but I, yeah, it's going pretty well. And it's quite nice because I now have access again to my like main yarn stash. So I've got a little bit more wiggle room in some of the designs that I'm doing with this jumper because I have more yarn available to me. So why don't I show you, oh, I'm all tangled up. Why don't I show you what I've got? Here's the completed front, neck included. For the neck, I did this yesterday. I went down three needle sizes. So the body is worked on a 6.5 millimeter and I worked the neck on a five millimeter and I think it's still too big of a needle size. But this is like a serious amount of knitting. It's double folded. Like this is a full six and a half inches of knitting. So I really don't want to rip it out. Um, but it looks a little bit silly on. I don't know if it'll look better after blocking, if I need to put an elastic in there. I'm quite hesitant to put an elastic in there. I don't know. It just feels wrong. But um, I will do that instead of re-knitting all of this ribbing. Um, I chose to do the dark and then I used this whole super soft in the color damson uh, for the inside of the neck. I did 15 rows of two by two rib and then I did four rows in a four millimeter needle so a full millimeter down and then I did 15 rows in this um, mostly to preserve the yarn that I have of this dark color because there's still some of it that I need to use on the back um, and this here, this is like a comparison of damson compared to the pink that I was using. They're quite different. I really like this color. I think it goes well with the rest of the jumper, but I also don't think that it's really going to be visible. Um, these safety pins are where the bust shaping started and it ended at this dark line. So. I added a good few inches with that. Well, this is why I won't know how it turned out until it's sewn up. Yeah, I think that that's pretty much, oh. I was going to say that's pretty much all I have to show, but I'll show you the finished sleeves as well. Um, so it's just this little panel at the top that I added. And on this side, it is the dark color. Okay, this is the best angle that I'm gonna get. Um, so here's what it looks like on. You can see that it's quite long. Like, this is how long it is, and it's very rolled up. Um, and the neck is actually looking a bit better today. Is that possible? Maybe it had a little bit of time to settle. Um, and this sleeve goes on this side, and it will look like this. You can see that the these two colors are sort of matching up 
and then this sleeve goes on this side so it's gonna look like that that's quite good you can really see now and the back is still not complete um so there's your update for how the jumper's going. I'm quite happy about the neck actually on this try-on. I think it's looking fine. And you can't see the color on the inside, but it's there. And maybe you'll be able to see like a flash of it sometimes. I have done, I've drawn up a different chart for the pink and red section on the back. I got it into my head that I wanted to do like a broken heart in Tarja and that that would be really cute. So I looked online for a chart, couldn't find one. Um, so I made one and I will just show you that now. I went online and just Googled the free knitting chart maker. And then I um, Google searched an image sort of broken heart illustration and roughly drew up what I was thinking, but I wanted like half of it to be tilted more and not like symmetrical. So I took a screenshot of each half, I put them both into a Word doc and tilted one of them. And then I uploaded that into the chart maker and then cleaned up. And that's how I ended up with the chart that I got, which I'll put on the screen now for you to see. I haven't knit it up yet. So, um, but I can't imagine it won't look good. And I'm gonna use Intarsia, I think, rather than stranded color work. For the back, I have, oops. I don't have that much yarn left. I'm gonna run out of the white and I'm going to, Fergus is using the litter box, and I'm going to run out of the marl. Um, so I sort of have been drawing up some other ideas for the rest of the back so that it still looks nice and I can sort of, to help me visualize it. And so this is what I <laughs> drew up um, for color placement at the back. So I'm, I'm like here. And the idea is that I'll just knit this, this is gray as a marl. Um, I'll just knit that um, until, <laughs> until I finish the yarn. And then I'll switch to red because I have two cakes of red, whole super soft red. It does, it's not a perfect match for the Biche Bouche, but it's not bad. It's definitely good enough. Um, so I'll then continue that panel on the side in red. And then at the bottom, if I have any pink left over, I want to stripe the red and the pink because I think that would look really nice. And in the Intarja Broken Heart panel, I'm going to use the original red. Um, I don't really have any particular reason for doing it this way other than I think that it will be noticeable if I switch from one red to another in a big panel, but I don't think that it will be noticeable if I switch from one red to another in different panels where they're not touching. And then I like the idea of the striped striping in the rib because I really like how single row stripes look in rib. Um, so that is my plan. My broken heart chart is about 50-ish rows long. Uh, I should be able to get that done with the amount of wool that I have in those colors. And I have a pretty good amount of like all of the colors I need for the dark wool. I've ended up, I've finished two and I switched to two other colors, but I, it looks almost exactly the same. So, um, yeah, that's the update. I think the next time I talk to you, I will have seamed it up and it will be done. Um, I'll show it to you pre-blocking and post-blocking because I think blocking is going to make a really big difference. The only drawback that I can think of to using the whole super soft red is that I think that this yarn bleeds a little bit um, and I'm putting it right next to a white section. So I think I'm just going to have to be a little bit careful with how I wash it. I've already used red next to white, but I don't think that the Biche Bouche bleeds in the way that this does. So it's going to be on the back, um, so I don't really care that much about it.
but that is the only drawback. Yeah, full steam ahead. I will check in with you in a few days. Pardon my messy office, um, but I am here to give you a pretty big update. This is what we are working with right now. I've completed all of the knitting, which is very exciting. And I've seen it together once and it went horribly wrong. Somehow the back ended up way shorter than the front, even though I knit the back two inches longer than the front. And so I ripped it all out, like the seaming, and then I blocked all of the pieces. And that was yesterday. And now I have done a mock-up of what it would look like all sewn together, but it's fully held together with safety pins just to make sure that everything's sort of mapped out into the right spot. And this is what it's looking like. It's really big, um, bigger than the original, but there's nothing I can do about that now. It looks much longer on the camera than it does in real life. It's actually like, um, I don't know. I'll maybe try and get a better angle. And the back looks like this. I've got my intarsia, and then it's a little bunched up, I think. I didn't weave in all of the ends before blocking, I just did some of them. I think some of them got a little tangled. I'll weave them in, I was just, I just wanted to get it blocked so that it could dry overnight. Um, but I'm thinking that it's looking pretty good. It feels a lot lighter after blocking it. Is that normal? I don't know. Um, and much more drapey. And I think that the sleeves are a really good length. I can roll them up just a little bit if I want, and they'll look cute. And they'll be like a little shorter because of the safety pin, but also I didn't pin them right to the edge of the fabric. So I think this is actually pretty accurate. So yeah, I guess the next update will be when it is complete. So, see you, see you then. Hello, this is my final update. I have finished the sweater. I actually finished it about six weeks ago and I wanted to give it a good amount of time of wear so that I could really give you the full picture as I tell you my closing thoughts, tips, tricks, and final thoughts, I guess after the project has been finished for a little bit. I can't stress how much I've been wearing this. I really, it has become just such an integral part of my wardrobe and my house um, here, it's very narrow and it's over four floors. So it's really difficult to deal with the temperature. So I just, I always put a sweater on if I'm going downstairs. I always end up taking it off if I'm coming upstairs. And so I end up throwing it on and taking it off quite a lot throughout the day. Um, and yeah, I think that I've worn this every single day for at least a little bit. And a lot of days I've worn it all day, unless I'm in a hot room and then I've taken it off. I was making the thumbnail for this video today and I was very proud of how, just how similar my version looks to the version on the website of Toast. I think that it's quite common for me to think, oh, I won't get that because I'll make it myself. And I'm very proud to have actually succeeded in making it myself. Um, although this does look more handmade than a lot of the other stuff that I have made, I think just because my gauge was so much thicker than normal, I was using a 6.5 millimeter needle. And I think this is like the thickest, chunkiest sweater I've ever made. So it looks a little bit more handmade than my other sweaters, but nonetheless, it is that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's so cool, and you really can't get something like this in many shops. I, you can get it from one shop, but um, not with like the intarsia on the back. I tried to set the camera up so that you could see the back of the sweater and sort of see how it looks when I'm wearing it. So yeah, that worked, and it's kind of cool. I've been wearing it a lot with little skirts. That's kind of my style in this time at this time of year. Uh, this is like a tailored skirt. It's kind of short and sometimes I'll tuck it in at the front like this. 
Oftentimes I won't. It's got a little bit of a split hem, so I can do that if I want. The only downside is um, it's tricky to wear with coats unless they have quite large armholes because the sleeves get pulled up. The sleeves are the perfect length. It really fits beautifully. And I think I did a very good job. Uh, would recommend the winter's pullover pattern if you're looking for a drop shoulder pattern to use as a basis for something like this, or even just to knit if you want to knit a plain jumper. I thought that it was really well written. Um, I did make a little modification, which was oh, instead of the cast on, I did an I cord. And then I picked up from there. Um, I threaded a little bit of elastic into the neckline. It was just sticking straight up, kind of like a funnel neck. And I didn't really want that look. But the good thing about that is that it's very easy to just take it out if I ever want to change my mind. I guess some tips and tricks on executing, making your own version of a store-bought sweater. I talked through when I was choosing my yarns, some of the main ideas for yarn and color choice, but I would pay attention to what's neutral and what's color in the design. I would pay a lot of attention to the texture and gauge of the knitwear that you're trying to replicate. Even if you don't meet the gauge exactly, or even sort of, that's just something to be aware of, and the density of the fabric as well. I think that is, makes quite a significant impact about the way that a sweater looks when you're wearing it. Um, and the, the relation of the colors on the color wheel to each other. So in the original, there was sort of a yellow, a green, and an orange. So I chose to do sort of similar, like a, a red and a pink. I guess it's not the same as yellow, green, and orange. I didn't end up doing that exact thing, but I think that paying attention to the tonal value and the types of colors that I was using did help give the effect that I was looking for. Um, I guess my another tip that I have is to really not be afraid to rip stuff out. I first knit one of the sleeves with that blue, sort of thick and thin yarn that's since been discontinued, not since I recorded, but since I bought it, it's been discontinued from Rowan. And I at no point have regretted that other than the moment realizing I was going to do it, which was sort of disappointing. But that was a really good decision. And it just took a little bit of sort of deep breathing to realize I needed to rip a section out in order to achieve what I really wanted to achieve. This yarn has pilled quite a bit. I'm hoping that it's the sort of thing where it pills once and then it doesn't again, but it is knit at quite a loose gauge, so I can't really, I don't know. It's That's just the nature of the yarn, I think. Um, so I do need to give this a deep pill. I told you that I've been wearing it a lot and um, I have. This, this yarn is so interesting. It's that Ronald, South Ronald, North, Ronald's yarn and it's it's scratchy but it's also smooth it feels like almost silky and it's much more it's got much more drape than any of the other yarns from this project the other thing I wanted to mention is that the Bija Bouche Red bled so much I was worried that it was going to dye everything else it didn't at all um all of the white sections even the ones right next to the red are fine but it really gave off a lot of color uh, in the when I was blocking it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope that it's been interesting or even helpful. And if you do this, I would love to hear about it. I would really appreciate if you commented or sent me a message on Instagram or something. I found this to be so thoroughly rewarding, and I am still scoping the Toast website and for other things that I want to try and make my own versions of because they really have some great designs. So yeah, let me know if this has been helpful or interesting and I certainly have had a lot of fun making this project and I hope this video turns out interesting. So 
it's just about the end of the year. I hope you have a, had a good 2023 and 2024 has a lot of good things in store too. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.